Hi, I'm Matthew Price, and I'm one of the vehicle artists at Rivet Games. I'll be taking you through uh, and showing you how we developed the 385 and some of the modeling techniques and procedures that we've used. Like with all our vehicles, we, we normally start with either a reference trip or a survey or some sort of a trip that we to go on to, to get as much pictures and uh, references as we can get. With this Glasgow route, it's obviously been really handy because it's one of our local routes. So a lot of us have been able to go out and get reference whenever we want. Um, so I'll, I can show you a few little pictures that we've taken on this uh, survey trip that I've done. This is the 385 that we were working on. Um, and obviously we took dozens and dozens of pictures, hundreds probably across the entire project, just getting bits and pieces. And with this project, there's a lot of units that we've had to do. So we've gone through and I've, what I've done is I've collaged a bunch of my images together to show a few of the, the units. So this is the first class unit that we've kind of collaged together to make the entire side of the train. We've got the pantograph unit and the other side of the pantograph unit as well. So we can see both sides for the equipment and the layout of the livery and everything. Um, and obviously this is always useful for us to, to make sure that we're creating the, the trains as authentically as we can and yeah, just getting all the details that we want. One of the tricky parts with this project is, uh, this is probably one of the biggest trains we've done since we've moved over to TSW um, as, a, as Rivet. This train has comes in two formations, a four car formation and a three car formation. And I can show some reference here. And it's been really tricky doing this project because we've had so many units that we've had to, to build and make sure that we're getting all the units right. Yeah, it's been, it's been a struggle kind of like juggling between them and uh, making sure we're updating all the models correctly and just getting all the reference and finding all the reference for the, the, the different units. So it's uh, it's been a bit of a challenge. But yeah, there's, there's at least five, maybe six different cars that we've had to make uh, all uniquely for, for this project. It's, it's, yeah, it's been one of our biggest projects that we've had to work on. So now I'll, I'll kind of go through a little bit of our modeling process and how we've tackled creating the 385. Like with all our projects, we, we normally start out blocking in the driving unit and getting working on that unit first because that's where obviously the player is going to be spending a lot of the time and where they're going to be driving the train from. And we need to build out the driving unit so that we can create the cab and get all the, the functionality um, in as soon as possible. So this is um, a save of of our modeling process from early on in the production where we've managed to block in the the bogies really basic um, we've kind of blocked out the entire form also fairly basic and we've got the front in um, we've got block ins for like the entrances and the windows so we kind of know that the, the overall shape and size and dimensions of the entire vehicle but it's also very kind of basic um and in, in in the early stage and this is like all just placeholder for now but it's it's kind of showing you how we kind of first approach and make sure that we're getting all the dimensions and aspects of the the train right from this point we start to kind of like add in more details we'll start to kind of look at the reference more closely and start to kind of flesh out all the all the individual bits and if i jump over to this this is a bit further on in production where you can see the bogies are kind of starting to take place a lot more of the roof equipment is in there's more details on the in the front uh, we've got wind, windscreen wipers we've got like connection links and stuff on the gangways um, there's even a simple rig in place so that we can start kind of animating some of the doors and and the gangways and things like that so it's kind of getting there it's kind of being built up and again this is when we start to get the the train into this kind of place where we're starting to put in more of the the main details we kind of just keep building on from that and we'll, we'll go in and we'll kind of refine the front and make sure that we're getting the front of the train more correct we'll focus on more of the, a lot more of the smaller details and just kind of matching the reference a lot closer we'll eventually go in and, and start building out all the under equipment and fleshing out any more of the roof equipment that we need once we're kind of there we will start working on a lot more of the animated um, components so making sure the doors look right when they're opened and closed and and that also that the animations are working correctly so yeah th this is probably still near the beginning of the project but more towards midway through the project where we've got the train in this kind of state and then obviously we'll keep working on that and eventually we'll get to a point around about here where most of the train is blocked in almost everything is rigged at least for one of the units it's looking complete so we've got all our bogies in we've got all our under equipment all the roof equipment's in the the doors are all rigged and they've got all their details in there even the front of the train you'll see it's got all the window borders um inside here we'll have all the lights clusters and so there's there's a lot more detail now in here including details for bolts and screws and all that kind of stuff 
And then with this project, because there's a lot of units and a lot of kind of variations of the train that we've had to accommodate, we're trying to save on work and, and make sure that we're kind of reusing as much as we can. So with this project, what we've done is uh, with the driving units, I think we've got about three different units, maybe four of the driving units. So one for the, the first class and second class unit, the standard class units, and then there's a number of units with different uh, interior arrangements. So because of that, the ex exterior is different. Um, one of the things you'll notice on the on the exteriors is is the rear windows are either blanked out on what, the left or the right side, depending on what uh, unit it is. So to accommodate that, we've we've modelled one of the vehicles. We have like uh, parts that we can add on or, or take off. So here I can add on this part, and if I come here, it'll blank out one of our windows, so we can kind of make the different variations a lot quicker. Um, and if I come around to the other side. You can see this was blanked out, but if I if I unhide one of our kind of parts, we can add that window back in. So this allows us to kind of make a bunch of different variations a lot more easily and a lot quicker. And yeah, we can we can accommodate that. And so there's a, there's a number of parts on this train, mostly to do with the windows and the different kind of uh, decals that you'll find on the side of the train. So decals that we have for like first class and standard class, whether there's um, disabled access or uh, bike access, um, you'll see different logos and things like that on the side of the train. So we've done that with uh, with the driving units, and it's and it's helped a lot be able to make all the different variations that we've needed. With this project, we've also had to make a couple of trailer units. So if I show those, and the trailer units have been kind of derived from the driving units. So a lot of the 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 ends of the driving units have a lot of the same profiles as the as the two trailer units. So this is the pantograph unit we're looking at. And we've done a we've done a similar thing to be able to go between the pantograph and the the standard trailer unit. We've got a lot of these parts can be hidden and disabled, so the entire pantograph unit can be turned off, and we can replace the pantograph with other pieces that kind of just uh, are for the trailer units. So these pieces have been made specifically for the trailer, and we can move them into place and and easily uh, switch out and, and reuse as much as possible of the two different units without having to do extra work so that we can make all the all the units that we need to. So this has been like one of the kind of challenges we've had with this project is just making sure that we've got all these units and doing it as efficiently as possible. And yeah, this kind of gives you a Gives you a look at the the detail that we've gone into the the other aspect with this this uh, project that's not typical for most of the projects that we worked on is the driving units and the trailer units they have two separate different bogies so <laughs> this has meant like we've had a lot more work to do on this project generally we most trains all the units will share the same bogey with slight variations between them which is a lot easier to work with um, when you're only making minor modifications but if you if you look at the 385 when when it's released you'll notice that the the driving units and the trailer units have very different bogies and so it's meant it's kind of doubled the amount of work we would do normally for the bogey setup and this is another reason why we've had to kind of think smartly about how we split up the work and make all the different units because there's been a lot more extra work than we would normally do for one of these projects so that's been kind of an overview of how we've kind of approached the modeling for this project and the aspects that we've had to keep in mind and some of the challenges we've had with the modeling. When it came to the texturing, it was a lot more straightforward. And this is our texturing program, uh, Substance. And normally what we do is we'll bring in our, a couple of different variations of the model that we need to texture up so that we've got a good representation of what the entire vehicle will look like. But again, what we normally do with our vehicles is we try and reuse as much texture information as we can between our different units. And so th that's typical with most of our trains. And that's why this train, it's not been vastly different to what we would normally do. And it's been a fairly straightforward process when it came to the texturing. And also the, the Scott Rail livery that we've had to do, it's, it's not that difficult a livery to kind of make it's it's mostly the the scott rail blue and their their logos down the side of the train which are placed separately as decals um, which makes it a lot easier for us to kind of make the make the liveries so it's been our kind of normal straightforward kind of block in the livery block in all the kind of materials and metals and all the kind of textures that we kind of need around the train all the rubber and the hosings and kind of grills and stuff like that we've done kind of normally just go in and Block that out so the whole thing looks complete but it usually looks fairly clean and then what we will do is we'll go in and we'll kind of uh, add in our dirt and our kind of weathering and all of that kind of thing we'll also add on uh, our custom materials for laying on snow and the rain and then we'll also go in and make uh, more kind of 
more detailed textures so we can put in like little screws and bolts you'll find uh little details on the on the foot plates and and things like that around the train and so we'll kind of go in and do those afterwards and just add that extra bit of uh detail ac around the train so it's been it's been fun uh working on the on the texturing and just bringing bringing the whole thing to life even though it was it's taken a long time to get here and it's been a bit of a challenge with that with the modeling process once we get to the texturing it's quite fun and, and it's it's great to see uh the the train come together and look fairly realistic in the in the game once we've got the kind of texturing in there's a lot of like setup that we do in ue4 making sure we've got all the lights working getting all the the numbering working you won't see the numbering in, in here but in the game you'll see all the different uh, unit numbers on the trains that we have to kind of set up custom with custom textures and over here you'll kind of get an idea of how we lay out some of our our kind of more detailed textures so like our emissives um, our details, our decals, the, these you'll see here a lot of the livery decals that we need and these are, are placed on the train in, in our 3D packages. So it gives you an idea of like how we've had to break up the train and also we break it up a lot to accommodate the baking so that when things are animated and move we can, they still look and render right. Um, if we didn't do that then you might see weird texture issues across the train so we need to think a bit about that when we're kind of setting up the the texturing file and then just a, a brief quick look in the ue4 this shows you a lot of the parts that we've had to kind of make to assemble this train and if we go into the interior you'll, you'll see dozens of seats and and tables and all the equipment for the interiors that we've also had to put together so there's a there's a lot of work once we once we're finished in the modeling side and the texturing side in ue4 we have to come in and assemble the trains and make sure that they're all working there Adam, one of our setup artists, will probably be able to talk more about that and also the physics side. And that's how the BR Class 3A5 was built. We hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to check out the dev blog playlist in the end card, and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. Thanks.